Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to South American Deep Division 2. Got ourselves a very interesting matchup. It's going to be Omega Gaming versus Our Way. And well, or yeah, Wolf Team, whatever, because we currently don't know which team name they're really running under. I assume Wolf Team is the planned team that they're supposed to be, but they still need to change everything. Or what is exactly the case, but we'll figure that out uh, along the line. My name is Ika Truman and joining me in this matchup is Astini and well, this is definitely going to be an interesting match you think would be the favorite here. Hello DK Truman, hello everyone. Very excited to watch the Brazilian squad here. Wolf team, I believe. They just need to do the bureaucracies inside the game to change the tag because they communicate all the time uh, as Wolf team and I I think they're the favorites here. I would be expecting a 2 0 from the Brazilian side, but again, I'm Brazilian, so oh, okay, might be okay. biased I see here. It. I see it, I see it. Well, uh, you know, the only thing I always think, um, never forget 7 1. But, oh. uh, uh, sorry, it's really, it's hey, we got beat you in that, you know, third final position spot for on. Oh, no, just, uh, just I always gotta bring it up. Especially because I see that score so many. But nonetheless, <laughs> sorry for breaking some. The third spot's because we were tilted that we, <laughs> we lost the semi national <laughs> team tilted. Ah, don't worry, yeah. we missed the recent World Cup anyway. So we suck. But, um, yeah, it's uh, definitely going to be an interesting show. Like, of course, as you said, both team, clear favorites. Um... Honestly, against the Balrogs, it's a bit surprising that the Balrogs won. Even though I definitely think that Balrogs are, like, top contender for the entire Deep Sea Division 2. But our way, I mean, King RD, 40 Octavo, HFN, you know me, this, this is just a straight up... Like, there's no way... This is a third spot Division 1 team. The only teams that I would say would beat them out, normally, would be, of course, Beast Coast and... Under predator. That's what come to my mind. That would be the first thing I say. But if we go back to the open qualifiers, they lost to God Genesis on the first qualifier. And if you don't know any name of any player of, of God Genesis, that's what I expect because they're a super new team. They're like a Brazilian stack. There's one well-known uh, name that is Bardo, but just in Brazil. So it shows that there is no more city team in South America. Any team can beat the top contenders. So they might be surprised by Omega Gaming if they lost on the first open qualifiers, for example, and they already lost for Balrog. So yeah, we are extremely hyped, excited, and with high expectations on them. But when we actually see them playing, they need to bring the results. I, I think my camera is frozen. Yeah, no, it's back. It's back. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry for that. Um, yeah, I mean, to be fair, Omega Gaming they got two owed by um, Gorillas, and well, that's a little bit unfortunate. Then on the other side, our way they got taken down two one oh, against so their that. opponents, which we just did see the Balrogs absolutely crush. However, it now. seems that the drafting phase is live, so we'll be heading in right now, as you can hear on the background. It's Dyer's Quickly band go now. in on towards the bands, and well, the first band is not that surprising, is it, to Steve? No, not surprising at all that Weaver, such a strong hero, but I can say that it's Radiant's somehow surprising that the team that has first pick bans it, because usually, you're expected to do the best strategies that are in the game. And I believe Weaver first pick is one of that contenders. I'd go like Weaver IO are the best openings. So if you are first pick and banning Weaver, I hope they do IO. But they are a fan of IO. They ban Gyro. Yeah. So that's one big combo that's they can get. The IO. 10 seconds. Yeah, the thing with Gyro is that most of position 5 oh, in our region, left. they do Gyro 5. And you don't want to play against that hero that it, you're not sure if you should full counter it. And then they will just last pick 
another hard carry or you left it uncountered and it ended up being a carry and you have no answers to it. But still, it's a hero that Radiant's HFN does so pick. well, so I'm actually surprised they Dyer's decide to, to ban the hero. Lion. Okay, Lion first pick coming in. I mean, we do see also Snapfire and Mars getting banned. Now we saw last series, uh, both games being picked up, so definitely first pick banned oh, material. My test, my test, one, two, three. And a oh, couple of voice doing? lines being used Insane. in the game right now. <laughs> As, of course, that Lion was first picked. And the Lion is always, you know, the heavy burst, uh, AoE stun, Axe on top, Mana Drain, laning stage is pretty tough. <laughs> There's a lot of just spamming through both sides. Ooh. Dawnbreaker coming in. That's, uh... I don't get to see a lot of Dawnbreaker game. Yeah, and especially they... Pick it on first phase, so it can be a doll breaker five, three, mid, five and we don't have that information. So that might be the reason why they go on the first phase, even though the hero is not perceived to be so strong. Omega, Ma Omega Gaming, they've already done that hero position five on the Claro Apu League. Uh, I believe almost all the times they do as five. From what I'm checking right now. It's Radiance Band now. So it might be the support duo Invoker. and Invoker here band. for for the R. That was totally expected. That's the most expected thing on the draft, to be honest, because they played Invoker on the three last games for for the R. So it was very expected that they would go for that same hero because it's a hero that with Alacrity you can do so much with the heroes that HFN plays. So HFN plays so much those hard carries that soak up all the farm in the map that always try to be one item ahead of the enemy team and having Alacrity on top of that is such an empowering spell. And well, to be fair, you did already turn to very important aspect. That is 40R. Like, he's a very renowned vocal player. Uh, pretty much every season, the hero that he loves building but we'll have to wait and see how that goes because Dawnbreaker and Earthspirit are actually not bad against Voker. They, they can really Ten run in seconds. your face and get on top of you and that's not a position Voker wants to be in because of course you've got the Five tornado and a couple left. of spells to get them off to try and peel them off of you but uh, once you get a roll in from an Earthspirit with a silence on top dust thrown in you're just a sitting duck as a Voker. yeah I'm surprised I'm surprised by the bans. Like, I, I agree that Invoker is not that great on the game, but they've been running that strategy so far, and they're happy with that. And then they banned the Sniper. <laughs> the hero we were talking about. I'm not sure if they want to run Duza Luna here, because the Darkseer ban... I, I would go for Luna is their first choice here. To ban. But they banned Tight on Omega again? Okay. I, I don't quite understand the bands, but I, I would guess that our way they're going for either Luna, Duza, TA, and that's why they're banning Sniper and Darks here. I mean, banning Darks here makes a lot of sense. It's dire. You, uh, and you're just. In the laning stage, you get rolled on one time, uh, one time with the uh, Ion Shells, you get pushed back away from the tower, and you just burn to a crisp. Very hard to lane up against. And very aggressive in the early game, so that's kind of something that they don't want on our Ten way. Seconds. Maybe said looking for a little bit more of those late game safe laners that don't get second. destroyed by Earthspit in the laning now. stage. Beastmaster ban also, you know, same kind of idea. You get pushed away by the Earthspit, you get put in an awkward position, you slowly die. Yeah, Darkseer's a great duel with Earth Spirit, but Invoker is such a nice counter to Darkseer because you have that dispel on Tornado and you have the Tornado to catch someone running away. I'm kind of surprised even with their Spirit. And they go for the Duza ban because they read something like what I was saying, but I would ban Duza and Luna because I think Luna can do just the same job as Doza here for our way. Ten seconds. I definitely think that there are 
couple of very nasty heroes uh, to deal with, but the Dusa makes the most sense because, well, we see Dusa in every game, much, and um, Dusa is pretty good. Stupidly tanky, very annoying. That's the main important part. Very annoying. I'm gonna choose to go for a mid laner that can actually handle the Invoker because you could dodge like every spell on a Void Spirit. Like, Quaswex is normally the build that you want to go, but Quaswex doesn't do anything to touch. EMP very easily. Yeah, and again, you have Reach for that Invoker, right? You can jump into him with Void Spirit, Earth Spirit, Doll Breakers, so they have all the answers they need for the Invoker. Here comes an Ogre, which again makes me think seconds. that's gonna be a Luna or any other range corp. Five seconds so, TA maybe? But I, I strongly would like to see a Luna, unless they wanna like secure now a Legion Commander and then later go for that hard carry since they have Luna, TA, and maybe draw, so they still feel secure that they have three options and they can they can guarantee the Legion Commander, which would be super good for their draft. But I think Luna is just the safest choice here. In uh, in the draft so far, they got the ogre, of course. Cool. They they want to get some ranger, as you said, a trial ranger, which would be pretty nice. Still scary against an earth spirit, but luckily enough, ogre can uh, defend you against any issues that might come through our way. Are they going to choose their off laner or their laner? Right? Question. Dyer's turn to pick. Does become Legion the Legion Commander. Commander, which probably, most likely, is going to be the offlaner. I don't know how... Do you see the feed faster than me or something? I don't know how you always predict this. Like, he literally <laughs> predicts every stupid pick. Well, it's not <laughs> stupid, but, like, every single pick coming through somehow seconds. magically. It's like the sniper in the last series. Two seconds before they pick it. Five how? I study the game and I know the teams well, so I know the heroes they play and what would fit on it's the play style right they're looking for. Yeah, but so this is I'm... some next level knowing of stuff. <laughs> this is some <laughs> ridiculous brain power. I'm just baffled. I've never yeah. met anyone who is that good at draft picks. I'm glad to hear that, man. I'm, I'm really happy to hear that. Uh, it's what I devote my life to. I'm always studying the game. I'm always studying draft. And I'm glad Five seconds to left. see some things like this coming. Because uh, I could really see they're going for Luna or Legion. Because Legion, you have one more spell that you are putting in Aster Uh Wait. Asteroid? I missed the word. Uh, You're empowering your hero. Oh, uh, the... Um... Yep, I've lost it as well. <laughs> uh, what's it called? Yeah, well, another buff. And together with the Voker and the Ogre Magic... Steroids. Got... Steroids. So you're putting steroids in your heart carry. Oh. So you have the Ogre buff, you have Alacrity, and you have the Press the Attack. So that's how they like to play. They just throw every possible buff at HFN and tell, Hey, HFN, please carry us on that match. So... Luna was perfect here, and the only reason it's they would dire, not go baby. for the Luna would be to have one more hero to help him Maybe out in the game. To ban. And I'm surprised they don't ban the Luna. Dyer's turn to ban. Well, still available as you said. Well, there's still a ban possibility here. But it's going to be oh the TA ban. Honestly, I thought TA, maybe Shadowfiend safe lane is still a possibility here. Which is honestly not that bad. Yeah, they tried, but I really don't like it. But, well, they can try again, yeah. Works with the Ogre Ten in the seconds. lane, has all the buffs. Could go magic I don't know damage against left. Timber if necessary. Yeah, that's was the next thing I was going to say, if you go raise against Timber, because with raise you can actually deal with that lane. But I guess Luna is super fine here, Luna is okay against the Timber. It's one of the few carries that you have so much magic damage that you can actually handle the lane. That's, uh... You need something with a bit of magic damage, as you said. 
to try and keep the timber saw off of you and it's going to be the ursa who's no magic damage whatsoever but a completely different kind of safe laner and because it's of course agility it doesn't really care that much about the timber saw ogre cares but you know it's an ogre so also doesn't care at the same time and this means that you're probably going to take down roche at what 12 minutes i mean bloodlust plus yeah. the lc buff plus invoker roche is dead like straight up they have the tools to take it even earlier. And he's gonna have a nice lane, right? It's a pick totally with the idea that he wants to win the lane. And then Omega Gaming. Can they go like for illusion cores like Naga? Even against the Legion? Can they go for a draw? Naga would problematic. Monkey. Possibly on the Ursa. A monkey is not that bad in the lane against the Legion Commander Ryan, you, uh, you easily would. And the troll, okay. Trolls are actually very good against the Ursa because you can pretty much survive the Ursa's jump on you and your ulti lasts longer than his ulti. So you survive in the end. Same with uh, popping it in time against the LC so the duel doesn't help you. I actually like the troll though. I definitely don't see troll like ever being picked up anymore. Yeah, it's one of the answers for the lane of Legion, right? And it's a hero that is not that easy that you duo him. But I would like the monkey a little bit more. Just because I think Invoker can kite him very well. And it's 4DR Invoker. <laughs> like, it's such a good hero. It's such a good player. Player-hero combo, you know? Seconds. So... I want to... Uh, the ice wall and then uh, you know a couple of other things on top be fairly annoying for the uh, troll to do anything honestly i think a lot of important factors here for omega gaming are going to be the, the two spirits that are going to have to make all the room in the world keep uh wolf team or our way i don't know which one we're going to stick with away from the world until he is uh, farmed enough yeah, I think we're gonna see Wolf just snowballing because now I believe it's kind of the best team with the best draft and it's like a Radiant draft with Ursa which makes it easier to get Roche. They have all the tools they need to just snowball through the match and they just can't afford to make that much mistakes because as mentioned, like, everything on that tournament is quite good, so they're gonna punish you for mistakes if you're running that snowball strategy. But I believe they're experienced enough to not make those mistakes. After we see the game about to go live, and your prediction right, is, I guess, our way? Yeah, that way. That way? His way. Yeah, our way. Wolf. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be very confusing. Which one do you want to stick with? Wolf, I guess. Do you know why they're called Wolf? I have Hello, no Mike idea. Test. Mike test, one, two, three. They are sponsored by... Oh, they signed Not... yeah, September 2nd. I got signed by Wolf. Yeah, but That's they... That... Not that they got sponsored. It's a new organization by Flow Podcast. It's the biggest podcast in the country, and like the host is just like he loves Dota 2 and he always wanted to invest in Dota 2. And Wolf is flow written the other way around. <laughs> That's the perfect reason. <laughs> I took a while, like it was mind blowing when someone typed that. I'm like, oh, oh okay. Or uh -huh. you know. Yeah, because one of the most perfect. famous teams in history in South America is Elite Wolves. Is uh, the previous Smash team that uh, they they got banned, but it was one of the biggest teams in South American history. So some related to that, like oh, they are the new Lobitos, or how <laughs> you call Wolf in Portuguese or Spanish. But no, they're just like flow. Written backwards.
Yeah. I, be I believe this one is Peru, if I recall correctly, because I saw in the lobby. And yeah, so Bolivia is closer to Peru than to Brazil. Uh, okay, that's kind of misleading because Bolivia has borders with Brazil and with Peru. But the Brazilian server is on the opposite side from Brazil that the border with Bolivia. Thank Does it make sense? You precious Thank weakling. You. you precious weakling. So like we have borders on the west and our server is on the very east. That's a strange man. I'm all for a little downtime. You feeling fresh? Lose together. Nah, it's cool. I got five Stay ping to it. Let's not blame it. Doing? Don't let people know that's not good for the entire region. Come on. There is... Russia is in Sweden. That sounds weird, but yeah. It's Luxembourg. It's Luxembourg. I believe Luxembourg, Austria, and then the Russian one is in Sweden. <laughs> I accidentally muted myself. <laughs> I hope not for too long. My bad. But uh, yeah, we were talking about the different regions where they were stationed. So it's a fairly interesting affair. Right now, I mean, if 4DR is a real chat, he goes Quas Exort. Yeah, especially because he's got the Goku hair. But he's not going to go for Quas Exort because no one ever does. And he already queued up the Urn of Shadows. Why do yeah, people hate against Timber? I know that it's good, the stuff, but so much fun. Yeah, but you need to be more active on the early game. That's the thing, as a mid laner. The battle begins! I'm gonna take the fight. Your uh, Omega against an Ursa. Level 1. He'll just right click Hello, you to Mike death. Des. Mike test, 1, 2, 3. Well, I should have done that. Hello, Mike test. <laughs> Yeah, we need that voice line for the stream. Maybe it was Tavo trying to communicate with you all the all this time. Yep. You exactly. DK forgot to unmute himself. He's just watching the stream, AFK. Yeah, I knew what was on his mind with the Legion Commander and he knew about the mic. Yomi coming in. Right clicks against Liss X. Doesn't of course have reactive armor just yet. He does have the timber chain to get some last hits on the creep. Or attempt to get last. Yep. Walking down. Blood, blood secured. They have their names actually in caps. Inga T and Chan! <laughs> that reminds me of um it called. Uh Star Trek, the second new one, you know, with the Wrath of Khan. He goes, Khan! Now we can go, <laughs> John! For every kill he He's gets. Gotta keep an eye on it. In Brazil, we don't use caps, but we use on as King Gon. It's like, on means big. So he's a big king. Ow. So it's yeah. King Arrow. I'm gonna probably stick to King RD. Because I'm Let's go. Let's go. It's a way of calling Lelis. The offlaner of Alliance. Let's go. Oh! Uh, well, yeah, I just normally say Let's go. Yeah. Because uh, I'm, I'm a European that only has like. Well, no, to be fair, I am Dutch. We also have some weird ways of saying that stuff. Like, you know, semi-Swedish sounding. Kitchen for us is Kuken. Who? You know, the region's weird. The more you know from each other, the more you learn. Yeah. It's a culture exchange. Brazil qualify- yeah, I mean, I, I was thinking about the World Cup that's coming up in Qatar, but I thought Brazil qualified, right? However, I forgot, you know, there's like yeah. 
10 teams in South America trying to compete, and there's like six of them that go through. <laughs> yeah. There's like no chance Brazil's not gonna qualify. <laughs> oh, you never know, you never know, but yeah. We, we had good uh, results on qualifier. I guess we were the first one to qualify. Oh, yeah. Please. Yeah, we got. We made it way too close. But we did qualify, so you in Qatar in November. Yes, indeed, in November. Which is terrible for us. I don't know for you. Yeah, you probably always have nice weather then. For us, it's cold. We can't, like, yeah. have a party outside and watch the football match together. Everyone's like, no, go away. It's cold. For us, it's warm. It might be even too warm, right? Because we are in, on the South Pole, so it's... Your winter is our summer. So it's actually warmer than normal. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, your summer has the same temperature as our winter, so we are always fine. <laughs> yeah, no, but if you get our winter, you cry. I cry. I hate my winter. Cold. 40R might cry on the mid lane. Oh, no. He survives. Does he? Yes. Uh, he has a tornado yeah. ready as well, in case it's needed, plus the TP coming out from King out. King out. You go. No. Oh. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna miss say that every... Oh. Oh. I'm just gonna stick with King RD. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. Well, I guess chat just realized that um, I muted myself. Nice, putting up a barricade. For quite some time. So this game, not really as much action as we saw in the Balrogs match. I mean, a couple of like small skirmish fuffles, but so far no real attempt on each other's lives. No real aggression coming in. So bottom lane, then get spooked. But with the Bloodlust buff, of course, a pretty fast boy. No solve for him. Yeah, I was expecting more aggression because if you go Earth Spirit, you want to do rotations all the time. And Earth Spirit has no kills, no assists. So I believe that's quite good for a Wolf. Because if you're an Earth Spirit and not getting kills, you're set. You don't farm. Like, you farm heroes. Yeah, that's the problem with Earth Spirit. Terrible farming hero. Until you, of course, start running down enemies and get those kills. He's gonna go for the Yule Scepter first item. Of course, uh, stuff against, you know, uh, Ursa kiting is always great. Uh, duels, you know, get rid of the LC in a duel. The fo Foker, Sunstrike, Dodge, if that you get to that point in the game, of course. It's gonna be quite some time until the Foker levels some points in Exhort. In the meantime, Timbersaw, he is just stacking those nice, juicy camp uh, waves on top of each other. Make sure that the lane gets auto pushed. Look at Ursa items. He's going for the battle for it. Okay. I guess he wants to take this game late. I mean, you know, they are the more experienced players. So I think that taking every game late is probably more advantageous for them. Tavo, nice dodge top lane. It's rooted up though by the troll. Dropping low, but we'll be able to ease. Yeah, and it's about playstyle. I believe HFN, he always wants to be farmed. He want to be ahead on that work, even if that means giving some space for the enemy team on the early game. I mean, that's just... Uh, you kind of don't want to make that risky play of going for a very aggressive game and then you just can't break your way through. And then you're standing there with an early game draft that can't do anything. And the Battle Fury Earth is just farms so incredibly fast. Though I've seen a lot of people go for just a ring of casual ring of health. And not finish the Battle Fury, but just only get a ring of health. Continue farming. Ochre TPing bottom though, very early on. I guess they want to push down the tier 1 tower. Or even go for a gank attempt onto the timber sock. And they lock him down, rolling boulder in. Pushes him away. He does survive. He gets... Uh, Cancelled or interrupted possibly But a very Interesting choice to go for that Gank attempt bottom lane. I mean right now Tano is having a pretty good game mid 
Yeah, I don't get it why they would try to get the skill without the earned charges. With the with the earn, this could be acceptable. They might get a chance of killing, but without it, there was zero chance. Especially on their tower. If it was like a push lane, I get the TP gank attempt. Like th then it makes sense. But this was very far back. It's very. It, I, I mean, the experience mid got gifted to the line in the meantime, which is pretty nice. But he only got like two creeps and then fell back. Yeah, and now their spirit's gonna have a lot of XP mid because White Spirit he has the haste and he's going for HFN. Dano, HFN dropping low, does not have Enrage available anymore, and he knows he's a goner, so he is dead. Yodomi as well, in trouble, chased down by Lissax. And the Omega early game does manage to get the kills, which probably should result in the tower gone, because, well, it is a timber saw, and eventually the tower's gonna go down anyway. Yeah, and that's an outcome of that bad rot rotation the from the Invoker. That's what I'm saying, like, if you make mistakes, you're gonna be punished for that, for sure. And Invoker had no TP, so they knew they could dive the Ursa. So, bottom lane to defend it, but uh, Timbersaw at the moment is level 8. Level 4, Timber Chain. Pretty reactive armor. He's a pretty Why tough cookie to beat. I mean, that cast range and speed on the Timber Chain's... Pretty nasty to try and beat. You need a lot of lockdown, maybe even a duel to try and take him down. Yeah, or just that he's diving so much and tanking many tower hits, then you might be able to TP with the Invoker, but... Currently Timbersaw is the king of bottom lane, even though Ursa is second. HFN had a very good lane, he did die, but... But does it matter if you're second in net worth only just 200 gold behind the troll who... Granted, also had a completely free lane, and is also going for the Battle of Fury. Oh, this is gonna become a very late game. I mean, we have three kills in the first minutes. I'm expecting at least a 40-minute game. Yeah, but but I'd rather be the troll going for the Battle of Fury than Ursa. So I think Omega is happy with trading farm right now. Even though on the very late game, then it makes a difference, right? Because you have the Legion Commander with press the attack, giving you that BKB, you have Alacrity. Then it can turn hard, but I can see on this mid game, Omega will have the advantage. Uh, that's uh, pretty much the question, how they're gonna do it. Though big stacks in the jungle being made by the Radiant team. Which Ursa is looking to farm up right now, doesn't have his Battle Fury done just yet, but uh, with the entire grouping of the Radiant side, it's going to be easy farm. However, there's a smoke guy coming in, they find the catch. Onto Dawnbreaker on the side, that's just a bait and switch. Thanos going to jump in aggressively, gets the catch onto 40R, but there's the press the attack. Get rid of the debuff, big AoE silence from Dark Demon, they're trying to disengage, and Tano, he's out of spells, he's getting dueled. The Void Spirit's in trouble, the Void Spirit is almost dead. Dissimulate? No, won't be able to get it off and big fight coming out from Wolf Team. Okay, I found really, really weird that Wolf, they were farming as 5 on Triangle. But they knew something, they knew that Omega was gonna try that play and they just ante anticipated it. But even though they got 2 kills, they don't change any network because they had five heroes locked on the triangle, cheering farm, while Timber is just farming the entire bot lane. Yeah, and Troll also just farming away. He's almost done with the Battle Fury. I mean, HFN is fully done with the Battle Fury, so he can take those ancient stacks in no time. That means he's going to get the, his uh, boots and stuff done. And I mean, these two safe laners are just farming like crazy. The only difference is Troll went for his full phase boots first instead of finishing up the Battle the Fury. Oh, that would be a painful death. Does have a tornado. Can they control him though? Timber chain forward. Shakram on top gets the kill. Birdie does AP in, but won't be able to really do anything because Timber saw is level 11 already in a 12 minute game. Yeah, the Timber is so strong, especially for a Timber that went 
against an Ursa. That's not such a free lane. Wouldn't expect him to be so strong now. And that seems to be the Bolivian speciality. As I mentioned, like Whisper, Oscar, both from Bolivia, and both offlaners playing very well in South America, and both they have such a strong timber. You need to like first phase ban against their team, so trying a pretty strong timber here, Lisex. Not too shabby currently. And a 2k net with lead after a 13 minute game is nice, but they're looking to go for Roche. Or at least they're looking There's to go for There's a smoke Gang. with a dagger. He used two smokes though. That move. Yeah. No Ursa heads into the pit. It does get scanned out immediately by the Earth Spirit though. And he's gonna roll in onto Age Offense, spots him out, gets the silence off as well. There's gonna be the big light of death stun onto the Ursa. They're gonna surround him. The rest of the Radiant team needs to rotate in. There they come. Ursa gets kicked back. Dark Demon coming up big. Gets the kill. They will lose Tano in the process. But they're rushing in to get these kills as well. Because the Troll Warlord can take down Roshan himself. And 40R would be a huge added kill. Nice! First spike coming out. But is it going to be enough to keep him alive? That is unlikely. And that is exactly the case. 40R loses his life. They get... Another big catch though. Tano, Tavu, is he gonna blink dual Dark Demon? Just for that dual victory damage? Wants to. So, uh, it is risky. However, they defend Roche. Ask them their scan. But they do keep growing in net worth. It's a battle for a Ursa forcing Roche. I, I don't like what I see here. On our way. They seem kind of lost with the playstyle. Middle tower is not a little bit trying to uh, find their avenue, but the Troll Warlord, he's farming up nicely. And honestly, in the late game, I'd rather be scared of a Troll Warlord than of a Ursa, because Troll at least has, you know, the chance of swapping over towards range. Yeah. Now they're doing what they should have done. They need to take this tower. They need to control some areas of the map that now belongs to Omega. They need control and vision to actually do Roche, so finally they're taking that tier 1 top tower with 15 minutes, but they're 4k behind, took so much for that decision, and they really need that tower to open up the map. Definitely trying their best. Yeah, I'm surprised that Omega, they just let it go. It's fine that you let it go, that tower, but usually you want something in exchange. And they had a catapult on mid lane, but they didn't force anything. It is uh, looking very problematic right now. Still haven't taken down that first Roshan. And honestly, I would assume that they're going to keep an eye on the area. Because they don't, of course, have a scan anymore. So it is back up. Jump yeah, duel. Dawnbreaker is dead, but does have a buyback and her ulti. So it's honestly, I think it's a nice kill. But it doesn't do... Stretches are fortified. I think Omega is on the right area of the map, but they should be controlling the power up rune. It was a region that didn't go for tunnel because they weren't paying attention at the power up. And if you're 4k ahead with Void Spirit, you need to control that rune. That's what allows you to actually take fights and snowball. Region rune, not the best, but if you get Arcane or DD, it's game winning. Void Spirit, he's gonna go for the uh, Kaya Sanj first item, which, I mean, I get it, it's like the normal standard item these days. Oh, Aghanim Scepter would be very good to have against the Ursa Evoker, and even the Lion this game. Like, especially making sure that the Ursa stays silent. Yes, they do already have a silence on the Ursa Spirit, but uh, making... Just... Don't wanna be dealing with an Enrage in those team fights. Yeah, and Ulz would be so good against the Ursa, also as a save for the duo, while Legion doesn't get a BKB or the press the attack uh, shard. It'd be interesting to see, but his understanding is that their 
lacking that much, which I don't really agree with, but he's playing well, so. We'll let it slide for now. Timbersaw yeah. is going for the load serve. Always a nice combination when you look at Legion Commander, the double duel damage uh, shenanigans that could come through, which is very scary, but of course, it, it is amazing against a Lion, an Ogre, an Evoker. Three the heroes that don't like their spells getting uh, purged off or reflected. Yeah, and for the Arveso comes after Timber Ill, so he already has one mechanism of dispelling, and with the Lotus Orb, he's gonna have two. So, I believe 4DR should have gone for the Midas just with Urn, without upgrading the Vessel, because it's a slow game. They have Battle for the Ursa, they're not getting... They got the Ursa bottom. They are getting the Ursa, it does have a Salty available. Troll's trying to chase, but that's a nice Earth Spike from King RD. Roll in, won't be able to connect on top of him, and... Lion's even gonna get the TP away. The chase though, Dark Demon going deep, has his Yules done as well. Catch on to Ursa, he doesn't have his ulti available, and when the sun comes out, then... Chan! That's the kill. <laughs> With the help of Mingate. Yep. <laughs> Alright, now they're finding Yadimo, Yadomi, sorry. But, uh, they're finding all the kills and walking into the pit saying hello. Trolls got himself the SNY fully done. He's going for the BKB next. Right now, I mean... We've given the... Ooh, that's a big blast. We've been given a lot of love towards uh, Wolf Team, but uh, Omega looking pretty solid. Trolls gonna continue taking Roche. King RD gets taken down. 4DR, what can you do? They need to get a jump in or deal with anything in the pit, but a level 2 Meteor... The doesn't really do anything, and 4DR is probably even gonna die afterwards. So, oh, Invis comes out. No dust. Actually, he does have a dust on the Earth's bit, but they already did lose him. Process. Nonetheless, the first Roshan, surprisingly enough, went to the team that was still capable of taking Roche. But honestly, Wolf Team should have had that Roche ages ago. Yeah, the thing is, they've been punished by the Ursa build. If you don't have Diffuso, you cannot fight into that early Roche. And Omega Gaming, they took advantage of that. So they are taking the chances that Wolf are giving to them. Oh, there's Mope here. Might get Mingata. Well, that's going to be a little victory at the very least. So the troll, of course, did have that Aegis. They're gonna go in onto the LC, try and chase him down. Tavo will lose his life. That is the Aegis popped and victory damage for your offlaner, which honestly, I'd still say you'd take that. For Wolf, you mean? Or uh, Yeah, for Wolf. Too. Yeah, I'll be happy for Wolf. They got the duo stack and they got the finger stack. Oh, they and the finger as well. Okay. They can scale. Gotta get those stacks like for your infinity. level 15 and level 20 talents. Good spirit. Gotta be careful. Problem is they don't have like hard... Like, except for duel, the lockdown on wolf team is very minimal. Like the, the line, yeah, but Ogre pretty much banks on luck. And 4DR, his lockdown is something that voice spirit can just easily walk away from. Like he hits a uh, astral step slash dissimilate if he gets hit by uh, after a tornado or the cold snap and you're just completely fine though. The lion is the only one that you really have to fear right now. Jump in, Dark Demon in trouble, rolls to safety and the gank attempt has failed. The only one in front is Lissex. And well, he's a timber saw with a Yule's Lotus. Jump in, looking for a duel coming out. There's gonna be the big heal blast. HFM pops his BKB, is looking for more. There's the duel on the voice bit. He's caught out, Troll Warlord Alti. Ingati! Running in, going for the heavy damage. HFN on the run, but can't get away because the Troll Warlord again, he just outlasts you with that battle trend. It's so rare to see HFN dying so easily. You usually see him tanking an entire team fight no matter what hero he has, because as you can see, he had Alacrity, he had the press the attack with the shard, he had Bloodlust, all the tools he need, but he can't even trade his to the troll. 
Troll in trouble. Needs help. His entire team is gone, so he's just gonna die in the tree lines. It looks like Timber's almost there to help out. No mana for Sunstrike for 40 arc. Takes a lot of damage. And Lissax, the saving grace for Mangati. Still, Mangati still needs to be very careful of the Sunstrike, though. Sunstrike actually on to Dark Demon. Another dual victory. And slowly but surely, Davo is building up those damage stacks. Yeah, now you can see the experience of Wolf counting because... Omega Gaming, they had such a nice team fight, but they couldn't capitalize at all with that because Troll went for the tier 2 tower, meanwhile the team was farming jungle, so they were simply not on the same page. And I mean, not even the jungle were close. Tower. Like, they went all the way back towards their own jungle. Uh, yeah. Pretty problematic, mention to try and help him out, especially the Void Spirit, like, you kind of want him there. To try and bail you out. And the Void Spirit went for BOT, but I feel like the Agonings would be so strong. Because if you jump on the Lion and kill him, Wolf doesn't have that much control afterwards, so... And he can definitely burst the Lion with Agonings. Top side. Catch on to HFN. Does pop his BKB already. Rest of the Radiant team trying to rotate it in, but Mangati, he's going ham with his ulti and drrrt, HFN dead again. He said that, you know, he wants to tank these big team fights, but he can't tank anything because he's getting caught off guard every single time. Yodomi on the run, chased down by Dark Demon, no way to run away with the Earth Spirit on your heels. And the rest of the team are right in tow. This is looking disastrous for Wolf Team because honestly, Omega, they're looking crisp. Especially the Timber saw this game. 707. He's looking it's insane. Bronze tier Timber. Either he doesn't have Dota Plus or he's just like a god. Or this is just, you know, he never plays on his main. That's also what's up. <laughs> yeah. Hiding threats for TI. Exactly. Because uh, they know, you know, we're going to qualify, get to Division 1. Then afterwards, we're going to win Division 1, get to Major, and then get those DPC points. Easy, TI. Almost there. I mean, if Team Spirit can win TI. Yeah, the Cinderella story over and over again. Yeah, that's something that happens with, like, every TI. Insane. <laughs> Very rarely do the favorites actually do anything. Yeah, LG, they went to the... It was amazing finals, right? From oh, 100%. But... It was so good. Oh, catch on to Tano. Tries to disengage. Tavo wanted to jump onto Tano. God, that's so annoying. <laughs> that they're Tano and Tavo. So it is going to be Yodomi taken down. Nothing really invested on either side as well. I mean, the troll BKB, yes, but he still has his ulti. And Timbersaw has tiny cooldowns on everything. Void Spirit as well. No big dire ulti. Ma yeah, magnetize. You know, who cares about a magnetize use? Yeah, I believe Omega, they just want to farm the troll BKB so they can win the next Roche fight. Meanwhile, bottom... Duo, Sunstrike. You get yourselves an Ags at one point on the Voker, and then you kind of always have like that easy... Yeah, he's going for the Ags next. You know, always the easy dual uh, Cataclysm combo to get a free kill on pretty much anyone but the Timber. Yeah, and it's 90 damage for Tavo. BKB bot on 4DR. So the other cores from Wolf, now they can actually... Do more things on the team fight, I expect. What does HFN need to build, do you think? Just to make sure that he can do something. Asher? I feel he needs, mm. like, something more to survive. Danik? Yeah, but... Lincoln's? I don't know. I think he, did, <laughs> he goes for a basher and try to initiate all fights. Just, like, play mist on the map. And enter later on the team fight. You can't be that hero tanking spouse. 
I do love Tavo's choice though. He did go for the Heavens Halberd, so almost done with it. So that is really good against a troll, especially if he turns to, you know, the range troll for a second. And like if HFN can farm his buyback now, then he can actually frontline for the Roche fight. So he dies, buys back, queen fight, get Aegis. That's how it shard. Should work. I mean that shard is always crucial to get for yeah. Nursa. He also got the Mind Breaker, which is amazing against a Void Spirit. Oh, Earth Spirit also. All heroes with Skate. That is a full Abyssal Blade gun. Which is uh, pretty quick. HFN. He is, I mean, that's the plus side of the Battle Fury compared to the Diffusal. He is right on the heels of uh, Ingati, the farming department, who also has his Bastion out done, by the way. But I'm always straight buyback for Abyss, so I'd way rather have the buyback on that Roche fight than just upgrade the, the Basher. I'll not even upgrade the Basher, just get yourselves a Vanguard that you put in your inventory. Yeah. He's got and it in the backpack. That's, that's not what you want right now. And he's gonna show bottom. Meanwhile, Rose response and i guess omega they will just check it again i would hope so so here goes the fire spirit for wolf and omega and they know where it's bottom so they could actually take the road before ursa can connect yeah he needs to run for quite some time they need to delay this somehow and that's exactly what the folk is trying to do can't give away an ages plus a free shard i mean it's Still pretty nice to have. It's not like the die have like superheroes with the shard compared to the troll shard, which is insane. And uh, the Ursa, I mean, the troll shard's like garbage. Void Spirit's pretty nice. Dawnbreaker's like okay. Earth Spirit's. Actually, Earth Spirit's not bad. Timbersaw's. And Timber 1 okay. is fun, which matters. It's super fun. Yeah, but Timbersaw is also pretty good because you can push towers with it. Which is something Timbersaw sucks at. Okay, smoke from Wolf. Here comes the team fight. Yeah, but the... Dawnbreaker should be the one tanking the smoke gank, actually. Because if he dies, he can immediately buy back Solar Guardian into the fight. Yeah. But it's a Timber there that doesn't have buyback. Dark Demon. We're all so incredibly on tense. Yeah, he does have bots, so he's there in no time. Yeah, he should really push fast that lane, so he creates a lot of pressure on Wolf map side because there's a catapult wave, and they, if they keep fighting on, on Roche, they will lose the tier two bottom. But HFN, he just jumps into Roche. He's gonna do it. Even before they notice. Well, that's uh, a nice age she. Uh, ages. I always still think she cheese, but the uh, shard and he walks away because they don't check the pit. Surprisingly <laughs> enough, no one thinks. Oh, we just took Rose down to like half HP. Let's keep an eye on it. No, they're they're yeah, sure. If they're not showing under that ward, you know, to the left side, then they'll probably never walk into. Them. That was a big fat mistake. Yeah, but kudos to HFN, they thought so fast on that move, he just jumped there and when you look at him, Roche is done. And now HFN top net worth of course with that free shard, mainly because he had that free shard even though it is still very close between the two sides, but he also has that Aegis so in second life, he's, he, all of a sudden he's twice as hard to kill. Well, yeah, that's the yeah. That's the time that Omega they should skip fights for the five minute duration. I think so. Even they have agonies on Void Spirit and BKB on trolls, such strong timings. I don't think you wanna fight into two lives of Ursa. I just use that uh, Void Spirit bots to uh, kind of split push the entire map out. So they are looking to try and catch Tavo. 
Uh, that was spotted the void spirit. Yeah, he dips out. There's some split push shenanigans, as you said, trying to dodge any full five on five fight. Even going for the tier two tower mid as a good trade, which honestly is definitely a very good trade. Oh, jump in. Tavo tried to go for the duel, but honestly, the Timbersaw is not the one you want to duel. They want the Troll Warlord instead. Pops his BKB looking for King RD. Does take him down. No bio for King RD. Going for the back line. Tavo in trouble. And he is dropping low. Tavo does get himself away. They're now stuck. Slowed down. The Age just got popped on the side. Troll Warlord. Oh, the Age fan gets absolutely brutalized by Minga T. And the heal coming out on top. That is going to be the full Ags heal coming in. Oh, the Cataclysm. Oh, but he gets a double kill thanks to the Battle Fury Cleave. Beautiful stuff. They do have a buyback available on the Radiant side, but they're losing everyone and everything. 40R on the run will be able to stay alive, but that's a three buyback coming out from Wolf Team. And they had the Aegis and the Shard, and what does it matter, Asini? Omega just outplayed them with the macro game. They forced Wolf back, and they just back up one by one, and HFN, he felt so strong that he jumped into five heroes so he lost his first life very early and he left all his backline to to die he can't deal with the troll ever oh jump in going in for the troll right now no all the uh, for minga t but does have the abyssal blade gets the stun up on the run there's gonna be a duel oh but this is maybe not the best duel coming in duel victory damage it will not be achieved currently they do manage to find themselves the kill. That's a die back onto Tavo. Troll Warlord ulti charging forward. Give me blood. Give me money. Give me everything you've got. And that's going to be 40R. Pops the BKB on the run. But there are so many die heroes on the chase. 40R gets bashed with the last hit. Does he get away? Yes, he gets caught in the end. That's a full team wipe. They don't lose a single soul on the side of Omega Gaming, and that is just beautiful. They outplayed both team completely. You see, the underdogs, they always can make it. I just choose to cheer for the underdogs on their own game. Because now they're like playing so great on Omega Gaming side. So, so great. I don't see how they lose that game anymore. And the problem is with the uh, Ursa, um, like the Troll Warlord, of course, with the uh, Whirling Axes, gives himself 60%, well, the enemy missed chance of 60%. Without an MKB, unless you pop your BKB, you like can't hit the Troll Warlord. You just don't hit him. You hurt, don't hurt him. He's near impossible to kill at that point. And that's kind of what Ursa had a problem with in most of these fights. Troll, and 909, 10-0, 11 Timbersaw. That's why you don't want to go late game as an Ursa, and you don't build Battle Fury on the hero. Man, I, I'm one of the most haters of that build. I casted the OG Tundra qualifier to TI when Skeeter went for the Battle Fury. I, I'm sure if he went for the Puzo, Tundra would be on TI. <laughs> I'm still mad with that decision till today. It's uh... It's kind of a choice you have to make and on one hand I yeah you kind of want to try and keep up in the farm with troll but uh, on mm -hmm. the other hand you kind of want to win the game before the troll gets fat so I'd rather choose go for the early game I mean you've got a legion commander you kind of want to take fights every single time you got a voker I mean their lineup on the radiant side was pretty much perfect for early game advantage but they barely wanted to take a single fight in the early game Cataclysm comes out, but uh, no, and this gets popped. Uh, boom! Made a very, very big mistake. Cataclysm is now on cooldown as well. Duel got completely wasted, and they get a freebie on top. 50 seconds, and no LC. And they only need one more set of racks to finish up the game. Now we have Domi going down, and strongly believe that the last set of hearts we will also go down, no buyback on Ogre, no buyback on Legion. HFM pops his BKB very early. Timbersaw, he's A-OK, -okay. they turn it around, they're gonna go in onto the fight. Uh, no in trouble, but they're gonna just surround that Ursa and there's nothing HFM can do. The GG gets called and 
Well, the surprise first map win. You went for 2-0 on the side of Wolf Team. <laughs> However, we stand very much corrected. Because Omega Gaming came to play and definitely showing up in this series right now. I might be good at draft understanding, but on teams, I guess my bias is making me wrong. But I, I guess everyone was expecting Wolf to show the better Dota, but no, Omega Gaming, they made the better decisions into itemization, into playing the Roche area on the right times, taking the right fights, and Mingate and Lisex, they didn't even die on the game. That shows how easily it went for Omega. I wouldn't call easy, of course, because they beat three players that were on TI, two players that were on last TI. But they made it seem easy. Yeah, Omega Lu Gaming managed to absolutely <laughs> destroy 30 to 9. That is only the first in this best of three. Will Wolf Gaming come back or will actually get baffled at the fact that he gets destroyed in this uh, Division 2? For a steamy sake, I hope not. But we'll have to wait mm. and see until after the break. We'll be right back. 